This bridge was completed in 1779. It was the first iron bridge in the world. Why was it built in 1779? In fact, why was it built at all? People had been building wooden and stone bridges for thousands of years. But why iron and why then? The Iron Age is believed to have started between 1200 and 600 BC, depending on the part of the world. That may well be true, but most people's lives were still dominated not by iron, but by wood and stone. Iron was expensive to make. The ore had to be heated by charcoal in order to extract the pure iron, and the charcoal was then normally used for working the iron. Charcoal is a form of wood that has been baked without being exposed to oxygen, to prevent it burning. It was preferred because, to put it simply, it was possible to achieve higher temperatures. It's wood with the efficient bits and the impurities removed. It's what most people use in barbecues. Making charcoal is a long and laborious process. This meant that charcoal and the resulting iron was expensive and generally used for high value products like weapons, armour, and also for products for which no other realistic alternative existed, like locks and hinges and so on. When I talk about iron, I'm including various types of wrought and cast iron, and also steel. So, if iron was so expensive, why did they use it to build this enormous bridge which became one of the wonders of the world? To understand this, we need to go a little further back in time. The area where the Iron Bridge is located and the village around it is now called Iron Bridge for obvious reasons. The original name was Colnbrook Dale, and it is on the River Severn, Britain's longest river. There were iron deposits in the area and plenty of trees for making charcoal, so iron working was already well established in this area. In 1706, Abraham Darby, a Quaker businessman, arrived in the area. Why so many great protagonists of the industrial and social revolutions of the 18th century were Quakers will be the subject of another video. He wanted to make better cooking pots, but was very dissatisfied with charcoal as a fuel because of its cost. He, like many other people, use, tried using coal, but apart from the problem of impurities, is if you heat up most coals, they deform and crumble as they outgas the variety of hydrocarbons. This can clog the th flow of air through the charge, which ruins the iron. The impurities from combustion of coal make uh, the iron useless. The impurities were also the reason why we don't use coal in barbecues. The meat would taste disgusting and would probably poison you. The solution was found by using coke. Coke is effectively produced by heating coal without allowing it to burn. By depriving it of oxygen. In Abraham Darby's day, the gas given off by this process was just a useless byproduct. William Murdoch, an employee of the famous Bolton and Watt Company l later in the 18th century, would use this gas for lighting, a story for another day. The coke produced much hotter flame and much better and cheaper iron. This meant that iron could be used for a lot more products, like in construction. Abraham Darby made a pile of money and was succeeded by his son, Abraham II, and his grandson, Abraham III. Sounds like royalty, doesn't it? In this area, that's more or less what they were. The dynasty went on to build enormous blast furnaces to cast iron and made massive amounts of cheap iron and loads of money. Abraham Darby III had this bridge built for two reasons. First, to replace the ferry service and provide much more reliable way of transporting goods across the river. However, the second reason was just as important. As an iron bridge had never been built before, this would really put their business on the map. But who was going to build it? Abraham Darby III turned to a local man named Thomas Pritchard to design the bridge. Pritchard was an architect and an interior designer. He had designed churches and the interiors of places like Powys Castle and Croft Castle, both nearby. He had never built a bridge in his life, certainly not an iron one. To be fair, no one else had built an iron bridge either. In fact, if you look at a lot of the joints on the structure, you can see that they are the sort of joints you'd expect to see on something made of wood. Although he designed the bridge, 
he died before it was completed. Doesn't seem fair somehow. It quickly became one of the great wonders of the world and people came from all over Europe to see it. Great publicity for the Derby company. Derby produced a variety of other products made of iron, which were quite unusual at the time. Things like iron chairs and tables. It is said that he even considered being buried in an iron coffin. The bridge is elegant and useful and has been in use from 1779 to the present day. Now it's pedestrianised. During the area's heyday, as a major industrial area, Colnebrookdale looked very different to the beautiful green valley of today. For many years, this area's role in the history of the modern world was overlooked. But in 1986, the Iron Bridge, along with the local historical sites, was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The area known as Ironbridge Gorge is recognised for its role in the development of industry and technology during the 18th and the 19th centuries. The bridge and the museums nearby are an important part of the world's history, and I strongly recommend visiting. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and please share it with your friends. And most important of all, go and see the Ironbridge Gorge. Bye for now.